G'day friends, Merry Christmas! It's the Christmas season, so uh, that just means I'm happy 24-7. Um, today's video is a Tag Tuesday, which was uh, long awaited, but not at all requested. <laughs> I, uh, I just, I, we've done a bunch of Tag Tuesdays this year. They were the series that was never gonna happen. <laughs> um, so I thought it'd be fun to, uh, to cap the year off with at least one Tag Tuesday. So um, I'm doing the, Tag Tuesday today is about the blokes stamp set. And uh, I'm gonna talk a bit more about Tag Tuesday uh, towards the end of the video, or just later on in the video, I guess. Um, but I'm using the bloke stamp set. Now, I could have put them in the JLB Creative Stamp Series videos, uh, but here are a couple of reasons why I didn't. One, because I just wanted it to be 10 videos, and I thought 10 uh, fun techniques and tutorials would be uh, a good... Oh, let me just talk about this for a quick second. This is a Westcott Deckle Edge Ruler. So you can see the little label down there when my fat hand moves. Um, but D-E-C-K-L-E. Uh, Deckel Edge Ruler. So if you type in Amazon uh, Westcott Deckel Edge Ruler, I'm sure this will pop up. I've had a bunch of questions about it and uh, honestly it's not one of those things that you need in your uh, in your tool kit, but it, uh, it really does give you a nice organic edge with uh, with some precision. So I have used this a lot. I don't recommend buying it if you don't really want it or need it uh, because it's it's just would just be an unnecessary expense and an extra bit of junk lying around, but uh, I do use it a lot. So for anyone that was asking, Westcott Deckle Edge Ruler. Anyway, uh, I'm, back, I'm back on the Coco bandwagon. Everyone was watching it and everyone's talking about it, so um, I know I said I'd take a quick break, but quick break is over. I'm back on the bandwagon. I had stage five fear of missing out, um, so once the FOMO kicked in, I had to get back on it. And uh, that little guitar, the little guitar drawing there, was the um, was the reference that I was using for the Tag Tuesday, the Coco Tag Tuesday that I did ages ago, months uh, before the, even, the movie even came out, when Steve and I saw it and uh, he was doing the workshop for the show at the park, he uh, wanted me to do uh, a, a Tag Tuesday about it, and he said like, oh, you'll be on the cutting edge. Anyway, that Tag Tuesday happened, I don't think anyone really understood what I was doing, and uh, it's it's so old now, like, I don't think it's going to come back around and make a resurgence, <laughs> um, but I did that paper stacking, it's all framed in, uh, up in our living room now, so I love it, Steve loves it, so that's all that matters in the end, but um, I did just want to use it, because that's been sitting up on my mood board for so long, and I thought, oh, well, I'll make a cute little tag with Steve, and uh, talking about Coco, and our Coco journey together because <laughs> uh, it's been a really interesting ride with that this year. Um, I know I talk about it um, in kind of a cryptic weird way but it really did mean a lot to the both of us and it was it was really interesting the kind of growth journey that we've been on uh, surrounding that experience and that show that he did and uh, the movie coming out so um, way too deep for, for what I'm talking about today and I'll probably never discuss the reasons <laughs> behind uh, how we were growing um, but yeah I just wanted to uh, do a nice little special tag because Steve loves it and uh, I'll talk about this particular stamp too in a minute. Um, but the reason they didn't make it into the stamp series is because I had 10 videos. That's like, it's a full-on program already. So I thought 10 was great. It was a good number. I didn't want to have like 12 videos or 13 videos. I just thought 10 was a great number. I'm not even one of those people that has an issue with like the volume on the television being an odd or even number. I just, I, for me, I was like 10 is great. And when I, um, when I went to go and do the stamp series, I actually pre-filmed a lot of them, so I didn't get these stamps in my hands until I think about a week after I'd finished the last video. And so uh, in those videos, I was talking like, oh, this is the second last video, or this is the last video in the series. So I thought it'd be random just to put in extra videos, considering I'd already talked about it being the last. Um, so yeah, a bunch of different reasons as to why, but either way, I thought I'd just show you me playing with them anyway. Those, um, those stamp series videos weren't supposed to be just about my stamps, and I think you guys got the idea because I've been been seeing you use uh, bunches of other stamps, I've been seeing you use your own drawings and illustrations, and uh, that was what I was loving because um, as much as I loved talking about my own stamps, like sometimes it gets a bit of, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, yanking your own chain, talking about something that you've done. So I wanted it to be a bunch of te techniques and like tips and fun uh, little tutorials to do with stamps because I don't, t I don't typically use stamps very often, and when I do, I use them like tools. So that whole series was more about sharing with you some of the fun ways that you can use what you've already got and uh, the bonus for me was that I just got to use the ones that I designed so um, they were you know they were already my aesthetic because <laughs> they you know I referenced them off stuff that I'd done before and stuff that I liked so um so yeah that's that's kind of why the stamp series happened the way that it did and why I didn't add these uh, these men stamps the blokes um, but that last stamp that I was using, some people have said that it looks like Steve. Now, I'm not going to say that that is a Steve stamp, because I think that's just super weird if I sold you a Steve stamp. Um, but 
When I was looking through references of my old uh, illustrations to to decide which which ones I wanted to turn into stamps, because a lot of them I pull from old drawings, like old illustrations, uh, stuff that I've done before, stuff that I liked, stuff that I would like to use again and, and you know, make into a tool. Um, I did pull some references and the reference for that stamp was actually just a random quick sketch I did of Steve once upon a time. So, um, and it was not even really 100% of Steve, it was like, thinking about Steve when I did it, and <laughs> it's just random, but like, 10 points for Gryffindor if you can go and find the reference image on Instagram, but um, it's, yeah, so I, I did use a reference of a drawing that I thought about Steve when I did, so I could understand where that might have come up, because the proportions are very similar and the hairstyle is similar. Um, if you want it to be Steve, just give him some gorgeous olive skin and some salt and pepper hair, and you can have Steve in your journal, <laughs> but that's not specifically what it was for, but I did, people did mention it, so I I thought I'd just clear up that, yes, by 17 degrees of separation, it could be a Steve stamp. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the blokes, the blokes are fun because, like, and like I just said, I don't draw blokes typically, like, it's not a once a week kind of a thing, um, I'm always drawing ladies and mermaids and fairies and pixies and aliens and potatoes, whatever I end up drawing, but, um, you know, men don't creep in there very often which is bizarre considering I am a man, but uh, I just find that I don't tend to want to decorate men a lot because uh, I, I had this weird hang up that like if I was drawing a man that it has to be masculine and then I thought one day like, no, I mean I've drawn pictures of myself that uh, aren't typically masculine or uh, you know that I really enjoyed, you know, I've, I've adorned men with you know, decorations before that could be, you know, stereotypically feminine, and we're living in the day and age where, like, you know, everything's fluid and everyone's everything, so I just thought, you know what, like, just go for gold, take the men, you can use the decor set on them, you can give them unicorn horns and fairy wings, and it would, uh, it would be absolutely fine, so once I, uh, once I got over that hang-up, that I had for some weird dumb reason. I actually really love using them because now, uh, you know, there's there's just men in the journal. Like it's something that we don't do very often. There weren't a ton, if any, like I didn't see any specific men sets of stamps out there uh, where it was just like these kind of, you know, blueprints for men that you could work off of and draw off of and, uh, you know, use all the techniques that we've been looking at before, like this washi tape clothing and the hat and, you know, this to me kind of looks like a very festive Dapper Dan of Disneyland. <laughs> Maybe this whole Tag Tuesday is about Steve and I don't even know it. Um, but yeah, this this is why I wanted to do the men. And, uh, and I really, really enjoy them. I like that the other face, the face that I end up using last in this video is the, um, the bigger face. And I love the size of that because it's really fun to alter the facial expressions on that. I feel like it's a really convenient size to do that with. And, uh, and it's just substantial. Like, uh, a lot of these stamps, you know, for the purpose of trying to fit enough into a, a set, um, because I wanted to do four by six sets, um, you know, they're, they're small. They're, they're great for, I feel like, um, uh, travel, traveler's notebook inserts and, uh, you know, tags and cards and all that kind of stuff. But as far as putting them in like, you know, a big dilutions journal, uh, they're, they're quite small and you can do the whole photocopying and resizing and all that. Like I'm totally for that as well. But, uh, that other face I feel like is just a bit more substantial. So I do like that for that reason. And it's in the back of my head to, um, to kind of upscale a few things when I think about doing some next stamp sets, um, which is always fun. Like I, I love having uh, ventured into this area of manufacturing because, um, you know, I feel like it's one thing to share with you some techniques and uh, and some ways to do things, but uh, you know, I'm always looking for a, a step to cut out. I'm always looking for some a tool to help me get to where I need to get to a little bit faster when I don't have the time. And I feel like these stamp sets were really great for that. So that's that's kind of why I like them. And obviously because they were you know older illustrations of mine or stuff that I had you know personally hand drawn. Um, I feel like it just totally goes with everything I've already done anyway. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. This is not a video about me talking about my stamps. I just wanted to show you me playing with them because, um, and also when I was doing the stamp series, I was very careful not to include anything that was too seasonal, just in case you wanted to watch it in January and you know what I feel like about, you know, having to deal with Christmas after Christmas. So I like that in this one, I could, you know, kind of venture off into Christmas territory with this and uh, I'd use my Christmas washi tapes because they don't get to come out all year. All year I'm waiting to use these really gorgeous washi tapes and everyone's so good. Good. All the companies are so good about making fantastic Christmas washi. I personally don't feel like I want to manufacture any seasonal washi tape just because once the season's over, I don't want to be left with a bunch of inventory. I've got a small home office and 
and uh, as it is, I've already, I'm trying to find different ways to store, you know, stock, like of stamps and washi tapes and books and all these kinds of things that I have to keep on hand for when I ship them out. And I just thought having a bunch of seasonal washi tape uh, at this point was probably a bit of overkill. So I've kind of strayed away from that for now. Uh, maybe if I get a bit more space or if I get the urge, I might go into something seasonal, but it's not on the cards for, the, for right now. And there's already so many great seasonal washi tapes out there anyway. I don't know um, specifically how I could uh, add to the market. I kind of feel like I'd just kind of be saturating what was already there. Um, which is boring talk. I don't even know why I'm talking about this, to be honest. Uh, let's talk about Tag Tuesday. Tag Tuesday. Um, I remember saying right at the start of the year, like, this probably won't be a series, or I'm not planning on making it a series, or something to that effect. And um, I ended up, I kept doing it. And it was because these tags are such a great little size to work off of. You could really finish, uh, you know, start and finish a piece all in one sitting. And I could do multiple. So it was a way for me to show, uh, showcase a bunch of creative work all uh, in this condensed, you know, one video, uh, I could show a bunch of different things. And when I was going to do little tutorials, I thought it would be great just to have them on tags. I always ended up cutting them up and gluing them into my journals or, um, you know, sometimes when I'm doing tags, like I know I've been asked this before, like, what do you end up doing with them? Sometimes I will just stick them straight onto a card front and use them as a card. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, especially if I make one for someone, I just, I like the format. I think they're fun to tie a little bit of ribbon up the top. Sometimes I'll just make them into journal cards like the last one you just saw. I'll put a bunch of lines on there and uh, when I'm looking for a really quick way to start and finish a page, I just grab one of them, journal on it, stick it in and, and call it done. So for me, Tag Tuesday was just kind of fun because the format was really manageable and um, the size. And so I could do a lot in a shorter period of time uh, as opposed to doing a, you know, a journal with me, which would take, you know, a couple of hours or, you know, maybe a couple of days. And it was just one piece at the end of it. Uh, I've got, you know, creative schizophrenia is what I like to call it. I just, I don't like to be doing one thing for too long. <laughs> and uh, even watching videos, doing one thing for too long can, can get on my nerves a bit, which I know some people really enjoy. Um, but at the end of the day, sometimes I don't want to have to sit down and voice over 25 minutes worth of one project, uh, unless Steve's doing a voiceover with me and then that's always fun to keep them long. <laughs> Steve's always got a lot to say. I love when Steve does the voiceovers. I, sometimes I think he just waits for those videos that he can be a part of. <laughs> Maybe that's why he commissions a lot. He does his free commissions a lot for me so that he can have voiceovers. I don't know. I'm on to Steve. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm just doing some fun things with the tags here and um, just having a bit of fun, using lots of stuff that I've just got, just got lying around, collaging it in fun ways. Sometimes you don't have to collage paper. You can collage your washi tape. You can collage playing cards and stickers and stamps and all different types of things. Uh, I loved on the first card when I put the little um, scrapbook piece of ephemera. You can see at the top left-hand corner, there's that kind of little belt. It's actually a cat collar. I got this really wonderful Happy Mail package from Zandra and it had these little cat embellishments in it for scrapbooking. Now, when we're using 3D embellishments, sometimes it's hard because we don't want to put them in our journals because they're going to bulk it up. But for tags, like if I'm going to put a tag on a card or, you know, a Christmas tag or something on a present, um, I think it's a great way to start using up all those 3D embellishments that we have lying around. And I just used the cat collar and cut off a part of it so it looked like a belt on Steve's, uh, you know, his pants on that tag, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I just want to encourage you, if you've got all that stuff that you're hoarding, because that's the stuff that I feel like we, you know, go through the slowest, like it doesn't get used very quickly or very often. Um, I encourage you to get out some of those 3D embellishments. See if you can't uh, put them into fun little tags or something. I don't know. That's Tags were always a great thing for me just to try new things on. Because uh, at the end of the day, I've got a little tag box and I put them in there. If I ever have to send a message to someone, I'll write on the back of a tag and uh, it's just something special and handmade that didn't take, you know, tons of time. So that's Tag Tuesday. Who knows if I'll do it again? Um, maybe, if I feel like it. I feel like that's generally what I say. <laughs> um, but until next time, thanks for watching and uh, Merry Christmas again. Bye.